Hello, my name is Clarence Hillard. In today's video, we're going to go over how to apply VLANs and DACLs dynamically using Cisco ISE and Aruba switch. So, before I get into how to actually configure everything, I wanted to just show you what my topology looked like. So, on the top left-hand side, I actually have my Cisco ISE server. It's 106315 24. And then on the bottom left hand, right hand side, excuse me, uh, we have my 2930M that has a client connected on interface 1 slash 13, and that's going to be our client that we're going to use to test and make sure everything's up and working and good to go. So I already have some basic configuration set up, so my 2930M is actually already added into Cisco ISC. Uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's not too crazy of a configuration. Uh, and then I'm going to show you all the commands you need to actually turn on AAA and get things working on the 2930M and sending request over to Cisco ISE. So that being said, let's hop into the CLI of the 2930M. So here we are on my 2930M. I'm going to do a quick show run so I can run you through my configuration that I have right now. So I have some class maps and policy maps in here already. And then here we go. So let me actually click more one more time and scroll up. So here you can see I already have my radius server host configuration in my 2930M. So it knows to go to 1063.15 to get to my ICE server. And then it also knows my radius key. So everything's good to go from there. And then from there, I think uh, I have my source interface as VLAN 280. And then I have a default route going to my, my gateway to get me onto the, the proper uh, network over to uh, my Cisco I server. And then my actual IP address is 10.128.1.10. So I'm going to show you how I would add this device in ICE in a second. But since we're already at the CLI, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some CLI commands in to get AAA ready to go. But first, I'm going to actually disable interface 1 slash 13 so it doesn't try to authenticate while we're entering these commands. So, first set of commands I'm going to enter in Our AAA port access authenticator active, which is going to turn on uh, AAA, so it's going to authenticate interfaces. Uh, and then AAA port access authenticator 1 through 120, that's actually going to turn on .1x authentication. And this is going to say, hey, what is the client limit? So how many clients can I have behind those interfaces that I'm authenticating for the line above? So pretty simple. And then I'm also going to turn on Mac-based authentication. So boom. Mac-based authentication is turned on now. So this is saying the same thing. Uh, how many addresses can I have on an interface? So in this case, I set the limit to two. And then this is actually turning on AAA port access Mac off. So now Mac off is authenticating on those ports. And then the last thing I'm going to do is actually set the auth order and auth authentication priority. Excuse me. Okay. So now auth order is going to be authenticator, so dot one x, and then Mac base, and we're going to prioritize dot one x and then Mac base. In our example, we're actually going to do a, a Mac bypass, so it's going to fall through the policy and uh, go directly to Mac authentication so you can see that as well. But that's all the configuration we have to do on the switch. Uh, the rest of the stuff we're going to have to do is well, we're going to have to come back and enable interface 1 slash 13, but everything else will be verification uh, just to make sure everything's working. So I'm going to minimize my 2930M and we're going to hop over to my actual devices so I can show you how you would add the device. Um, let me go, where is that, where is that, where is that? There we go. Well, that's not the right place, but it'll get me there. <laughs> um, so here I have my actual 2930M, so I'm going to just click on it and click edit. 
because everything's already been done. And here you can see all I did was enter in the IP address. Then I set the same shared key, so it's just test. Uh, and then the last thing I did is I actually have a device profile of HP Wired, and it's a copy, so it's a custom profile. Uh, but if you just had a vanilla deployment, you would actually flip this to just HP Wired, and that's the same as having it as an Aruba switch. So 2930, 3810, any of our switches are going to be the HP Wired profile. I just copied it so I can do some other additional testing. And I'll actually select it and we'll see how that works for my policy right now. So I'll just have to be aware that I changed it up. So I'm gonna click save. And next I'm going to actually go to my radius dictionaries. Going to click system, round radius, click radius vendors, HP, and then dictionary attributes. So here uh, is one of the places that you might have to check. Uh, in the past, ISE didn't have some of the actual radius VSAs. Uh, even now, it's still missing a few, like the clear pass uh, CPM rule. I had to add that manually. Uh, but if you're ever missing the NAS filter rule, what you would do is, I already have it in here, uh, but you click on that. You have to spell it exactly like this, so HP NAS filter rule. And you could also get these dictionaries from clear pass if you wanted. Uh, you just have to remember in clear pass the actual radius names are HPE, so you have to take the E out of the actual name and just put HP. Uh, and then what you would do, take the name, you copy the name, take the ID, make sure your data type is string and both. And then for this particular VSA, you want to allow multiple instances of the attribute. And then you would go to your, let's go back to HP. I don't know if I can just click straight there. Scroll down one more time. Oh, radius vendors. I don't know why it's not letting me click. Radius vendors, HP. Dictionary attributes. And then I would click add. And then I can actually, oops, I don't think I copied it. But I would add HP NAS filter dash rule. I think that's what it was, how it was spelled. I'd select string, so if the data type is something else, I'd select that, but in this case, it's string. Direction is both, 61, and then I would allow multiple instances, and then I would click submit, and it would work. Uh, so then I would be able to select it when I'm creating my actual policy sets. Uh, yes, I wanna cancel, because I already have it, so I'm not gonna, you know, re-add it. Uh, and then from here, now I'm ready to go to my policy sets, and actually create authorization policies and actually configure everything that I want to configure. So from there, I'm gonna to go to policy sets. I have a wired authentication policy set already. So this is doing wired.1x and wired map. Click the arrow. And then here I have my authentication policy. So in our case, I'm actually gonna do a Mac authentication kind of bypass, uh, but this is really just falling through. So what I'm doing in my policy is saying if authentication fails, uh, continue. And if the user is not found, continue. Uh, you don't have to worry about the process. That doesn't really matter. Uh, but for here, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to have a client that is not in my ICE data store for authentication, and I'm going to actually have them fall through to get some level of network access. So we're going to do that. So my authorization policy. So here I have wired map. I already have a rule set that says if you're a user using wired map, you just get permit access. But this isn't actually saying you can go to a particular VLAN or do anything just yet. 
but now I can actually create a policy an authorization profile excuse me I can select and when I select HP wired it's actually going to grab all of the VSAs that are associated with the HP wired profile so now that that's done I can actually select uh, the VLAN I want to assign so in my case I want to assign my client to VLAN 505 it's just a guest VLAN uh, so that's what I wanted to do for my client so I'm going to enter in 505 here and then the next thing we're going to do is actually select the HP NAS filter rule VSA so I'm going to grab that rule and I'm actually going to cut right here enter in all the rules and then break down uh, the rules and what I want them to do to you because I don't want to have you sit here and watch me type uh, and the other thing I have to do before we can even save this rule is give it a name so I, I think I'll just name it right now uh, guest uh, user VLAN there we go if I can spell guest right There we go. So cool. I'm going to cut and come back when I have all my NAS filter rules entered. Okay, so now I have all of my NAS filter rules actually entered on to Cisco IC. And at the very bottom, it's a little bit easier to read. Why, why is this one blank? Not sure why this one was blank. But okay, uh, when I click save, it should populate. So the rules that I have actually set up is permit UDP in from any destination to any destination on 6753, so DNS and DHCP. And what this is going to allow for my device, my the device that's on interface 1 slash 13 that doesn't have anything in the database, it's going to allow it to get a DHCP address and you know, actually connect into my network. And then 10.6.3.12 is my actual DHCP server, so when it actually sends the ACK back to the DHCP server, uh, it'll be able to get there. And then I'm blocking all internal IP addresses, and then the last line is permit in IP from any to any. So I'm just letting this client get onto my network and have internet access. So that's what my policy is going to do. I'm going to click save here. Uh, maybe I put like a space in here or something. From in, from any, to any. There we go. I'm not sure why that freaked out, but click save. And now I can actually select that profile. So I named it what, guest, guest, guest user VLAN don't need the actual permit access anymore there's a permit access in the guest user VLAN profile by default so I'm gonna click save I'm gonna head over to operations live logs I'm going to now bring up my 2930M once again interface 1 slash 13 enable him and I'm also gonna make sure my client is actually up. So it's actually a, a VM using a USB to ethernet to do its connectivity. Okay, so he's enabled. Bring this back up, show port of access clients. Okay, so right now it's actually going to try and attempt to do dot one X, and then after it's done trying to do dot one X, it's actually going to fall back to Mac authentication and authenticate. And I'm also going to do show logging tech R to make sure it's actually sending. It's blocked. Let's do show run. Make sure my commands all took as well. Okay, cool. And 
and now I'm actually just gonna cut and wait until it actually falls back so as soon as I stopped the recording it authenticated almost immediately so I'm gonna do show port access clients and now I can see it, it went to Mac off and it dropped to VLAN 505 so it just took a second because it was trying to fall back uh, and then here let's go to my live logs and click to see the authentication so Just making sure I went to the right policy. So guest user VLAN is the authorization profile that we just configured and it got applied. And then here we can see it pass all of my DACLs down. And let me go to the switch and we should be able to do show port access clients detail and one slash thirteen. So here we can see it's authenticated, oops, well, here, uh, and then we can also see the actual DACL get configured here. So, and then the, actually the same auth order, so dot one x and then Mac off, and it fell through the policy, so technically it's kind of Mac authentication bypass, uh, but, you know, that's everything you need to do in order to get dot one x uh, or downloadable ACLs and dynamic VLAN assignment working, and that's also how you configure it. Mac bypass uh, with an Arubo switch. So thank you for watching the video.